I was kind of praying I was asking the Lord Lord what do you want me to share today to your church and um, uh, it's been so from 4 o'clock I've been praying in the morning Lord show me what do you want me to do so since till about 7 7 30 I've got no nothing no confirmation on what God wants me to share but today's word I believe the Lord has led me after 7 30 to talk about this topic it's a very uh, interesting topic which we all know and we all probably understand a little more but let's together ponder upon God's word today the worship was awesome the presence of God was tremendous today hallelujah he is the great I am amen, amen. and you know that's what God is all about when God is in a place you better watch out because God's presence and God's glory is so great that it will fill your hearts hallelujah in fact that's why it's so true the Bible says that in the presence of God there is restoration in the presence of God there is uh, there is you know healing there is there is breakthrough that in the presence of God and that's what we are going to uh, today learn a little verse over here let's open 1 John chapter 3 1 John chapter 3 and I will read from I'll read verse 8 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 it says over here he who sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil amen so in some interpretations in some versions of the bible it is mentioned instead of manifested it mentioned appeared the son of god appeared manifested so what it means by manifested which means the son of god who is god came in the flesh and that's the manifestation that happened to us to, to all of us so son of God came in the flesh and it says in verse 8 and the devil had sinned from the beginning the devil had sinned from the beginning <coughs> for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil today I want to discuss with you I want to show you some very important things that is related to our daily life you see the bible says the devil is out there like you know like a roaring lion waiting to devour he's waiting to destroy people's life and in his top list in his top list is all those people who have given their lives to jesus and have decided to follow jesus now what is he going to do He's, he, because that we, because we are all in the top list now so he is trying his best to come into your life to destroy your life to destroy your family to destroy your peace you know the peace of God pass it on understanding guards our hearts and mind it guards us so just imagine if that peace only is destroyed then there is no God anymore everything and anything will creep into your heart so what he's trying to do that's the work of the devil it's, it's the work of the devil. He's trying to destroy your life. And, and what did Jesus do? You just read that verse, right? What did he do? The Son of God may be manifested for what? For what? To destroy the work of the devil. In fact, it says over here in verse 8, the second part will read, For this purpose, in the beginning, what was happening? The devil sinned. Sin is from the devil. It's not from the Lord. It's not from your family member. It's not from your relatives. It's not because that you know you want to sin so you sin. No, it's from the devil. And this has been happening from the beginning. Many people say the purpose why God came because he wants to prosper you. The purpose why God came because he wants to bless you. The purpose why God came because he wants to give you a good life. It is all wrong. That's not the purpose. 
People who preach that, there's some problem in their preaching because the purpose of God is to, in verse, in verse 8 it's mentioned over here, for this purpose, the Son of God, you know the Lord knew that the devil is all out to cause sin in people's life, to put sin in yours and my life, to make us feel pathetic. To make us feel condemned, to make us feel ashamed, to make us feel lost, to make us feel like a loser, to make us feel weak. And that, you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to all put it in a nice package called S-I-N, which is sin. Jesus came for what? What is the purpose? The purpose, the purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil go back to relate to us the first verse what was the work of the devil sin anybody ask you what is the work of the devil nothing his work his work is only one thing what he did in the garden of eden he caused sin he tempted eve got tempted adam also and they fell into sin what he was doing in the beginning he has not changed his plan. He is still continuing to do that. He is trying to, he is trying to put sin in your life. But praise God! For this purpose, Christ was manifested so that he could destroy the very purpose that the devil is trying to do. To destroy the work of the devil. Amen. Are you excited? So, so anybody ask you, what is the purpose of Christ coming into the world? Of course, Christ has come to destroy the work of the devil. What is the God so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus? For what Jesus came? Because of that S-I-N sin. Everything started because of sin. Everything started because of sin. If it was not sin, you and I would be already in, in the Eden eternally. Everything, the whole purpose the whole problem in our lives that is coming in between you and God is sin we want to learn a little more about it but I have good news for you God is not going to destroy it he's already destroyed it Amen. there is no sin that can rule your life anymore because the, the son of God was manifested for this purpose to destroy the work of the devil Hallelujah, I'm so excited. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's, let's meditate upon this little more. We'll go to verse 9. It's very interesting, verse 9. Okay, and it says over here, Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God. Do you understand what this verse is? How many of you have read this verse? No, you all have not read it? How many of you read this verse? When was the last time you read it? 12 years back? 6 years back? 3 months back? 1 week back? Whenever you have read it, there is some doubt that will always come in your mind. It says very clearly if you notice, and we are talking about 1 John right now. We are not talking about the other letters. We are talking about the, this letter, 1 John. It says over there, Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Two things. Two things that happened in these two verses. I, I just want you to show that to you. Two things. One. You can overcome sin only by two things. Only by two things. How can you, everybody wants to overcome this sin? Yeah? Now, now when you say born of God and there is no sin in him, in fact, John is not trying to contradict what he wrote, what he wrote in the first chapter. He wrote in the first chapter, nobody can say that he has not sinned. Otherwise, he is a liar. That means the truth is not in him. So John is not contradicting that verse. I, I'll explain to you what he's trying to mean. 
so he's saying let's go first there are two things that can destroy the work of the devil one is the very appearance of the son of god what is the very manifestation of the son of god he was born yeah he was killed he was buried after three days he rose again and now he has been ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of god so that is the manifestation of the son of god that's the first thing if you don't want sin in your life you need to make sure that you have welcomed jesus into your life yeah you need to surrender your life to jesus you need to say lord jesus come into my life if you don't have jesus into your life sin can never be destroyed we're talking about destruction of sin we're talking about destruction of sin in you go in the world and you talk to people about sin you see no matter how much they love jesus but if they have not accepted jesus into their life sin can never be destroyed the first manifestation is the son of god manifested so the son of god has to manifest in your life son of god has to manifest in your life you get up in the morning you spend time with the lord jesus you get up in the morning you pray you spend time in the word the second thing i'll not go more the second thing it talks in verse 9 what does it say it says he that is born of god he that is born of god which means it's talking about a new birth so once you see the manifestation and accept jesus into your life now you become a new birth remember nicodemus remember nicodemus he came in the night and he was he so he had a discussion with the lord jesus and the, and you know nicodemus said how can a man be born again and jesus says you know what what do you say unless you're born of spirit water and spirit, spirit. that's when you that's when you're born again john is saying unless you are born of god if you are born of god sin can never be in your life now wait a minute now we'll, let's 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 read that verse again verse 9 whoever has been born of god does not sin or does not commit sin in some interpretation it says does not commit sin and it says he seed remains in him and he cannot commit sin because he has been born of god he has been he cannot commit sin you know if you read the greek translation of this verse it's very interesting so john is not contradicting 1 john chapter 1 where he who does not sin the truth is not in him everybody has sin everybody has fallen short of the glory of god there is no way that there is any person in this world can say i am not a sinner even you when you accept jesus into your life you cannot say that sin is not in me sin is there but what john is trying to say in this verse if it's very interesting the greek translation of the verse commit sin verse 9 says he who is born of god cannot commit sin because god sees it in him like father like son you know when when our children is born they resemble who parents why because the seed of the the seed of the parents are in the child so he saying over here that means if like father like son like father like son who's your father i don't see confidently what is scared about who's your father don't get confused i'm, I'm not talking about your physical father your biological father i'm talking about that who's your father god god above he is your father and the bible verse says over here his seed is in you if his seed is in you there is no way you can sin there is no way you can sin but listen to this the greek the greek translation says it like this listen to this very clearly no one born of god is content to keep sinning the same verse 9 i'm reading up huh? 
but I'm reading the Greek translation and I've translated it into English again. It says over here, no one born of God is content to keep sinning. For God's seed abides in him and he cannot be content to keep on sinning because he is born of God. Hallelujah. You understand? So, the, the verse that the Bible that we have, the version says commit sin. But in the Greek version, it talks about a continuous tense. Which means the possibility is very high that sin might be in your life. Okay. But you are not content in sinning. You don't want to sin. That's not the primary thing. You don't want to sin. Now, it's saying about being born again. Being born again. Let's go to 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 and 10. Let's go to the reference. 1 John just flip your one page behind. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 and 10. So this is what the verse we learn. It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You understand what it says? So it says that as long as we are in this planet earth, you cannot be condemned anymore with sin. The devil cannot put sin into your life and condemn you and destroy your walk with the Lord. You can't do that. Why? Why? Because, of course, the Son of God has destroyed already the work of the devil. Sin is already destroyed in your life. But when we are living in this world and when we are you know when we are in the middle of sin and we know that this is sin the bible says that you and i will be able to identify that that is sin and we'll be able to do away with sin according to god's word let me let's read this one 1 john chapter 1 verse 7 it says over here i'll read it but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is a great God. Hallelujah. You know, Ephesians 4.24, Paul calls a born-again experience as a new creation. Ephesians 4.24, He that is born of God is a new creation. Uh, Jeremiah 24 7 says he calls this born again as a new heart remember that verse God will remove that stone of heart and put a flesh yeah Jeremiah calls it a new heart Ezekiel in, in 36 26 calls it a new spirit when you are born of God Bible says over here John says if we are walking in the light but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So what happens now when you sin? You're not like the other people who ignore sin. Why? Because the son of God is manifested in your life. You're born again. So what happens when sin comes? You immediately identify that I have sinned. What do you do? You don't, have, you don't allow pride and ego to set in. What do you do? You come down to your knees. You ask for forgiveness. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, I, I repent, Lord. And find you repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will not sin anymore. And then you move on in your life. So what, what's the difference between you and the world? When we are living our lives, sometimes we sin. Do you agree or not? Yes. Or everybody of you... Anybody over here claims that you don't have sin? Anybody over here? You cannot claim that because if you claim that, then there's lies inside you. The Bible says everyone has sinned. But what is the difference between us and the world? When the world sins, they don't recognize the blood of Christ. When the world sins, they don't know that they have to ask for forgiveness. They don't know that they have to repent. But when we sin, what happens? Because we know the Son of God has destroyed the work of the devil, which is sin. So what do we do? We don't allow the devil to allow the sin to rule in our life. So what do we do? Immediately, we ask forgiveness. Amen? You see the difference? You see the difference? So if you do this, 
you are doing this because you know that the son of God has destroyed the work of the devil which is sin hallelujah we have to remember this friends many people get bogged down when they sin sin causes sometimes depression sin causes a huge distance between you and God sometimes sin causes you a very silent period of time you don't want to do anything now because you know that you have sinned really and you're really a bad person God will never accept you and this is what this is what the devil will do he'll bring guilt in your life the accuser of brethren and that is why many Christians have these slopes in life sometimes they are very high sometimes they are low their spiritual life is high low high low. you know why that happens because when they are in that low bottom when they are in the low bottom somehow they are forgetting that the son of God has already destroyed the work of the devil sin cannot master me anymore sin cannot master me anymore as a Christian when we walk in the light the Bible says we got to walk in the light as as he is in the light who is in the light Jesus is in the light we got to walk we got to walk in the light and let me go ahead and read one verse over here we will continue learning 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 what happens why why this sin is such a trouble for us in our lives I'll tell you what it does verse chapter 3 verse 4 says whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness what is lawlessness anybody can tell me what is lawlessness breaking the law what else it says whoever commits sin commits lawlessness so what does lawlessness mean then breaking limitations what else not following the Lord disobedient yeah so I, I got a definition for you to so you can understand better lawlessness is living as though your own is living through your own ideas that you are superior than the law of God lawlessness is as good as you're living with your own ideas thinking that you are superior than the law of God that is lawlessness what sin will do sin is lawlessness so what happens is that when somebody who don't know Jesus I'm giving an example for you to understand somebody doesn't know Jesus he has sinned you tell him now you need forgiveness you say, okay fine I'll go somewhere else and do something and get forgiveness of sins but he will never understand what according to God and how he has to wash away that sin many times when we sin we break God's law and we are not able to recognize that we have broken God's law and so what happens when we do that when you are praying you feel that the presence of God is not there I am not getting my prayer answered because something might have happened which you have failed to identify so what we do is you got to pray and ask the Lord Lord you show me that's why David says Lord search me and try me examine all the hidden sins <coughs> do you know there are hidden sins in our lives you know that which only you and God knows nobody else knows it what you sin here in the conscious mind nobody will ever find out nobody will ever find out only God can find it so when you come in prayer and when you pray you don't be a lawlessness guy because you will I do Lord you know what I have sinned against you I have not walked according to your word according to your ways and Lord I ask forgiveness so it says over here coming back to this verse it says that lawlessness replaces God's law that's why the devil is all out he's all out to put sin in that life in your life because when he puts sin in your life your the God's law that is in your heart gets replaced gets replaced with lawlessness and when that happens you cannot see God you cannot hear God and that is what devil is trying to do he knows exactly how to separate you from God he knows it exactly 
What did Jesus do? When Jesus died on the cross and the sin of the world was upon Jesus, the Bible says God also could not come and save him. Why? Why? Because the world, the sin of the world was upon our Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says without holiness no one can see God. So God had to turn his back when his son was getting killed over there. Because God cannot tolerate sin. And when you sin, and that's why the devil is all out, he's doing his work. What's his work? What's his work? Only to make sure that, there, that he puts sin in your life. So sin is what? Basically, breaking God's law. Replacing God's law. Then anytime you noticed why you don't read God's word? Anytime you I you anytime discern that okay I'm reading God's word, but I read it two days, I stop, then the fourth day I read, then sixth day I stop, then seventh day I read, but I'm not consistent, brother. Anytime you you thought, I'm not able to remember God's word here. Why is that? You then thought about it? You thought about it? You can remember exactly how much money is there in your bank account. You know? But if I if you have to remember three verses from the Bible, it's difficult. You cannot say the verse without making a mistake. You understand why it's happening? I'm telling you something very, very, very very scary for the devil. He doesn't want me to say this. You understand why you pray sometimes and then you don't feel like praying? Remember? So you remember at home the Bible is on the table but you don't want to open the Bible and read. You're not read full day but you still don't want to open the Bible. You know why? You know why? That is the work of the devil. What he do? What he's doing? He's trying to replace God's law with lawlessness. When you don't read only God's word, how are you going to remember God's word? In the time of trouble, the Bible says that we've got to use the verses to speak to those troubles. But when trouble comes, all you remember is, oh, you know, you, you call up people and say, please pray. But you don't know how to fight your own troubles. Why? Because you're not reading God's word enough. Do you know why you don't come to church con- committedly every Sunday? Not you, I'm not talking to you. Why some Christians don't are not regular in church, are not regular in house group meetings. You know, uh, people don't want, they want to have fellowship with the world outside. They want to have, tell me one thing, when Jesus was in this earth, when you were walking on this earth, living on this earth, how much fellowship he had with the world and how much fellowship he had with the disciples? Every day, day and night, he was with the disciples only. You agree, no? You understand what I'm saying, all of you? Half of the time, he was always having fellowship with his disciples. But for us, what has happened now? The devil is at work. He knows it. He knows it. What is he going to do? He is going to destroy your relationship with God. How? He can't do it directly. He cannot do it directly. He will do these small, small things in your life to replace God's law. Many people have replaced church fellowship into friends fellowship. 80% fellowship with the world, 20% with the church. Enough. Kafi ho. The other bhi kut jayega to problem ho jayega. People talk like that. The other nahi jane ka usme. God ke andar jyada nahi jane ka. Boh dangerous hai. Aadmi paagal ho jata hai. Andar jyada nahi jane ka. Superficial chalta hai. Praise the Lord. Church pe jane ka. Hi brother. You know who's behind this? The devil. Are you getting my point? He, you know, and that's why the, that's the very purpose why the Son of God has come because to destroy the work of, he won't destroy that work. And how you and I would be able to overcome that? It says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 7, let's read that again. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. 
But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Hallelujah! All sins, matlab what? How do you define that? Many people are confused today. And your friend will come and tell you, okay, define sin. You might say sin is disobedient to God's word. Sin is anything that is replacing uh, the law of God is sin. But here the Bible says we have to walk in the light. Why? Because he is in the light. Why? Because the seed of God is in you and me. It's such a privilege. You, you understand what I'm saying? Say the seed of God, the seed. You all were born from your mother's womb. We all were born from our mother's womb. You know how we were born? Because of the seed. 